Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will talk about one of the most common causes of vision impairment, that is, diabetic retinopathy. So, let's jump in. Diabetic retinopathy is one of the most common causes of blindness in adults between 30 and 65 years of age in developed countries. The prevalence of diabetic retinopathy increases with the duration of diabetes. Almost all individuals with type 1 diabetes, and the majority of those with type 2 diabetes will have some degree of diabetic retinopathy after 20 years. First, pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy. Hyperglycemia increases retinal blood flow and disrupts intracellular metabolism in retinal endothelial cells as well as in pericytes, which are the cells that wraps around the capillary wall and influence blood flow and capillary permeability. This leads to impaired vascular autoregulation, production of vasoactive substances and endothelial cell proliferation is increased. The resulting capillary hyperperfusion causes chronic retinal ischemia, stimulating the production of growth factors, including vascular endothelial growth factor or VEGF. VEGF further stimulates deleterious endothelial cell growth and also increases vascular permeability. Endothelial cell growth result in new vessel formation, and increased vascular permeability will cause retinal leakage and exudation. Stages of Diabetic Retinopathy Diabetic retinopathy is a progressive condition, often classified into two stages non-proliferative, and proliferative retinopathy. Non-proliferative can be further subclassified in two stages, background diabetic retinopathy and pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. There is another entity known as maculopathy, which we will discuss after discussing first two stages. Background diabetic retinopathy the earliest signs of background diabetic retinopathy are microaneurysms and retinal hemorrhages, sometimes inaccurately called dot and blot hemorrhages respectively. Capillary leakage also occurs in this stage resulting in lipid deposition, and these are known as hard exudates. Preproliferative diabetic retinopathy As diabetic retinopathy progresses and there is continuing capillary hyperperfusion, Cotton wool spots, venous beading and intraretinal microvascular abnormalities can be seen. Cotton wool spots, which are also sometimes called soft exudates, are the infarcted areas in nerve layer. This stage is referred to as pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The disease, if not controlled here, may progress to proliferative stage. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy Proliferative diabetic retinopathy is characterized by the growth of new blood vessels on the retina, which may later extend forward on the posterior surface of the vitreous. New vessel formation is called neovascularization. It is denoted as NVD, if new vessels appear on the optic disc. And, NVE, if it appears on the retina elsewhere other than the optic disc. Serous products leak from these vessels which stimulates a connective tissue reaction, with gliosis and fibrosis, putting tractional pull on the retina. This pull may lead to tractional retinal detachment. Severe ocular ischemia may also stimulate new vessels to grow on the anterior surface of the iris, a condition called, rubiosis iridis. These vessels may obstruct the drainage angle of the eye, and thus outflow of aqueous fluid causing secondary glaucoma. Maculopathy. It is not a separate stage or classification, and can occur at any stage of diabetic retinopathy. Maculopathy, or clinically significant macular edema, occur when there is increased vascular permeability, and resultant deposition of hard exudates in the central retina. There is associated edema. CSMO is the most common cause of loss of vision in people with diabetes. Microaneurysms, abnormalities of the veins, small hemorrhages and exudates situated in the periphery, will not interfere with vision. However, if these changes are observed near the macula, and in particular if they are accompanied by loss of visual acuity, clinically significant macular edema should be suspected. 
Macular edema can cause impairment of visual acuity, even if this is associated with only mild peripheral non-proliferative retinopathy and no other obvious pathology. Macular edema can only be confirmed or excluded on slit lamp retinal biomicroscopy. Sudden visual loss occurs with either vitreous hemorrhage or retinal detachment. In pre-proliferative and proliferative retinopathy, whether or not visual acuity is impaired, prompt laser treatment is important to reduce the risk of hemorrhage, fibrosis, gliosis and severe irreversible visual impairment. Screening of diabetic retinopathy Annual screening for retinopathy is essential in all diabetic patients. This is so because the disease is asymptomatic in the early stages, when treatment is most effective. Screening is particularly important in those with risk factors. It should be undertaken by trained personnel in an organized and audited program. The preferred method is a digital photographic system for retinal imaging, with prompt referral of patients with sight-threatening retinopathy, to an ophthalmologist for examination with slit lamp biomicroscopy. If direct ophthalmoscopy is used, the pupils should be dilated for adequate examination. Unfortunately, many people with diabetes receive no regular supervision and do not attend for eye screening. Prevention of diabetic retinopathy. Good glycemic control, in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, reduces the incidence and progression of diabetic retinopathy. When blood glucose is lowered, there can be a transient deterioration of retinopathy. This relates to loss of hyperglycemia-induced hyperperfusion in the retinal circulation, and a consequent increase in ischemia. However, this effect wears off within 18 months. Improvement in glycemic control should therefore be effected gradually in patients with retinopathy, particularly when glycemic control is initially poor. Evidence from randomized control trials suggests that blood pressure control is also warranted to reduce the incidence and progression of diabetic retinopathy. Most guidelines recommend achieving a blood pressure of less than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury. Observational studies suggest that hyperlipidemia is a risk factor for diabetic retinopathy, but intervention trials have not been conclusive. Coming on to the management of diabetic retinopathy. Good glycemic control with an HbA1c around 53 millimoles per mole or 7%, and appropriate blood pressure, that is less than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury, should be maintained, to prevent the onset, and delay the progression of diabetic eye disease. Antiangiogenic factors. Antiangiogenic medications have been developed. Ranibizumab is a monoclonal antibody fragment that binds to vascular endothelial growth factor A. It is used for diabetic macular edema. Retinal photocoagulation. Retinal photocoagulation, or laser treatment, is indicated in severe proliferative or very severe non-proliferative retinopathy. New vessels elsewhere with vitreous hemorrhage. New vessels without vitreous hemorrhage in type 2 diabetes. Or in clinically significant macular edema. Argon laser photocoagulation is the usual method. This simple procedure can be carried out under topical anesthesia. Patients should be reviewed regularly to look for further development of new vessels and or maculopathy. Extensive bilateral photocoagulation can cause significant visual field loss, which may interfere with driving ability and reduce night vision. Rubiosis iridis is a severe complication that requires early and extensive pan-retinal photocoagulation. Vitrectomy Vitrectomy is used in selected cases of advanced diabetic eye disease due to type 1 diabetes, where visual loss has been caused by recurrent vitreous hemorrhage that has failed to clear, or by tractional retinal detachment threatening the macula. The value of vitrectomy in type 2 diabetes is less certain.
And that is it. I hope there is something you've learned from this video. If so, hit the like button. And don't forget to share with your colleagues, and subscribing this channel.